Well, welcome to First Sunday, and First Sunday is, uh, we always make it a little special because um, it's the first Sunday. <laughs> and, um, and we usually start a new series. So the new series is entitled Setting Priorities in Life. And the title of the message today, I think it's so fitting for me, it's called Putting Things in Order. <laughs> now, those of you who do not know uh, yet, uh, you know what, we'd have to move out of our home for 14 years. Well, if you didn't get the good news is that God allowed us to, is allowing us to purchase this home. And that, down from heaven, literally, literally, and I thank you for your prayers, because there have been a few times you all came up and said, let's lay hands on Pastor Lance and Pastor Cohen and the family, and pray, and you guys prayed, and let me tell you, we are so blessed, and we're so excited, but we're still moving, and a lot of you are going, why, why you got to move, well, <laughs> The deal was we had to move out by the 22nd, and uh, you know, we're still working with the landlord and so forth, so we still gotta move, okay? We have a place to go, and when we move there, what we'll do is work on uh, fixing up the home. Sounds good. So just to let you know, this Saturday, <laughs> if you're not doing anything, we're gonna be giving away a lot of stuff. Say stuff. Yeah. All right. I mean, we've been purging stuff like crazy. And I, I don't know if you've ever experienced moving and being in a home for maybe over 10 years. There's a lot of stuff that we have acquired. And uh, man, it is so much things, so much things that we just are purging and purging, getting rid of the clutter. So we just invite you to come to our home, 8.30, if you want to come by and, and look at our stuff. One man's junk is another man's treasure. You might find treasure there. And, uh, you know, have fun, have fun. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to be doing stuff like that this Saturday at our home. But again, God was reminding me as we were going through the stuff, a lot of clutter. Is, is that sometimes we acquire so much things in life and, and then we, we forget about it. We forget about the things that are hidden. And you know, we're pulling out old things and pictures and, and I went in our kitchen and I cleaned out our whole kitchen cabinet and I looked at this bowl and I said, do I really want to save this bowl that I haven't seen in 14 years? <laughs> I mean, really. There's been stuff sitting in there for 14 years I've never used. <laughs> and uh, just getting things in order. Life can be in disorder. And God has designed a spiritual order, a flow which can increase success in our lives. His way, not our way. Amen? If you're overwhelmed, if you feel like life is cluttered, if you feel like you're confused, many times it's because there's some type of disconnect, there's some type of disorder in life. And today we're going to look at putting things in order. We're going to look at what is God's design for order? How does this work spiritually? How does this flow move from God to us and into our families and so forth? Amen? And again, there's a spiritual flow, there's a spiritual foundation that God has designed for you and I, okay? So, and again, it's key to growing relationships, it's key to um, success in marriage, it's key to many things, and we're going to look at that today. If you're a believer in God, if you say, you know what, I believe in you, God, then you're going to believe and what he's done for us. And what he's done for us is sent his son, Jesus. He sent a part of himself, the part of the triunity of God, that we could have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So number one, I want you to get your notes out. For every believer, 
is this. God should be first. Write that down. In fact, look at your neighbor and say, you know what? God should be first. And I'm using the word should because many times, or a lot of people don't like to be told what to do. Amen? I'm not going to stand here and tell you, you have to. You got to. Today, I'm going to tell you, you know what? He should be. Because it has to be your decision. It has to be your decision to say, you know what, God, I'm going to make you first. There are many things in life that clamor for our attention every day. Amen? It just wants your attention. Like your job. you got to go to work. But it calls to you. We're at our jobs more in the day, what, eight hours a day? Yeah. How many of you work more than eight hours a day? 10 hours, we can work 12 hours a day sometimes. 14 hours, hey, I've got hands going back there. 14 hours, that's crazy. And it pulls for your attention, it wants your attention. And your devotion. What about your children? They want your attention, amen? You know what, I'm gonna tell you these parents, give your children attention, okay? Pay attention, all right, to our children because the moment you don't, man, we're going to lose them. Amen? But they need your attention. They clamor for you. They want your attention, right? What about your spouse? Absolutely, they want your attention. You know what? Husbands, wives, pay attention. Amen? Pay attention, all right? What about hobbies? Even your hobbies can pull, your, pull for your attention. Right? Lance, go surfing. Go surfing. <laughs> Surf. I get calls and texts from Joe. You want to go surf? Going straight out right now. And I'm like, uh, I cannot because I got like this. Right? It pulls for your attention. It wants to distract you. Amen? All these things, and we have to be very, very careful how we put things in priority. That being said, let's look at God's perspective this morning. Let's first look at what He sees and how He sees us as His creation, as His people. Okay? In the Bible, in Exodus chapter 20, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Alright? He gave His people this law that his people could follow for success. Amen? Now in Deuteronomy, this is like 40 years later. Okay? Approximately about 40 years later, Moses is reminding the people about these laws. Okay? How many of you know we need reminders all the time? Amen. All right? Because 40 years can go by and we forget. We need it every day. And let's look at the scripture, Deuteronomy 5, 8, 9. It says, you must not make for yourselves an idol of any kind or an image of any thing in heaven or on earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. So he's saying, people, I'm reminding you because he wants them to go to this promised land, this new place. I'm reminding you to have success. Don't have any other gods other than me. Don't make for yourself a god other than me. If you want success, I need to be your god. Amen? Right? People, that has not changed. That has not changed. God hasn't changed. His perspective, his heart for his people is saying, look, I don't want any other gods in your life but me. Amen? Yet we see today there are a lot of things that occupy our thoughts, our time, amen, our attention. And we can lose the priority of who God is. Amen? Why don't you think about this? 
Anything in your life can become a God. He said, don't make idols. They would make idols and they would worship. So therefore, anything in your life could become like an idol or a God that you worship, that you spend time in, that you invest so much time, money, resources, and you forget about who? God. All right? Is there something in your life that's kind of popping up right now that's taking your attention away from God? Is there a potential in your life that is, maybe has a tendency to take you away from the focus of who God is? Would you write that down? You know, many years ago when I first became a Christian, to me it was unnatural. When the pastor said, you know what, you need to make God first in your life. And I remember sitting there going, God first? No, man, I got, I got to take care of my children first. Amen? That was the first response I had. I, I can't make you first, oh, God, because I got my children first. I got to take care of my children. I got to go to work. I got a family to take care of. Amen? What I did not realize, what I realized later, I need God to do all of that. <laughs> but my first initial response, because it felt unnatural to say, okay, and you may feel like that this morning. What, make God first? What do you mean? And that, that was my response. What do you mean? Because it, it was an unnatural feeling to just say, oh yeah, absolutely, I'll make you first. Put my children after and my wife and so forth. But let me tell you what, there are benefits when we put God first. Amen? Look at your name and say, there are benefits. Look at somebody else and say, you know what? There's going to be benefits. I'm going to learn about these benefits. Okay? I'm going to learn about the benefits of making God first. Okay? And that again is having a relationship with God, not a religion. It's not about a religion it's not about coming to church and just having a religion. It's about a relationship with God. Making Him first is having a relationship. And how you have a relationship is through His Son, Jesus Christ. Alright? When you have a relationship with Christ, you have a relationship with God. So that was God's perspective. Let's look at the benefits. The number one benefit is strength. Write that down. Strength. Who does not want strength? I mean, if you if you're like me, I need strength. I need perseverance. Is there anybody in this room would say to me, no, I don't need any perseverance, I don't need strength. I think everybody needs perseverance and strength. In these times, in your life, in your situations, amen? Especially when you're feeling weak or in failure. When we fail, when we fall weak, we, we, well, when we fail, we become weak, amen? In our hearts. But the Bible says when we are weak, He is what? Strong. He is strong. But making God first gives that type of strength. Let's read the scripture together. Psalm 73, 26. Ready? One, two, three, go. My health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. God, he's my favorite. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You guys are good. It's an honor. God wants to be your strength. In your heart. I love watching the football scene because you see a lot of people playing with what? A lot of heart. It goes beyond your own physical. Amen? Alright? But when God is the strength of your heart, this is where divine things happen. This is where the divine manifests in your life. Amen? Alright? Divine things happen. I think this is going in and out. Yeah. 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 Ooh, ooh. We will still speak. 
His divine strength helps you to live a life that he's called you to live. To live in a right way or a righteous way. Not perfect, but in a right way. Amen? Psalms 1 to 3 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. What's the context? It's about walking. It's about how we live our lives. Blessed are those who do not walk in that way. But it says here, but whose delight is in the law. Uh, another one in the back? Orange? Orange. Here we go. We good? Okay. Stay with me now. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Amen? Making God first gives you the strength to walk in his righteousness allows you to walk and to meditate, to have that connection with God. And therefore, you will be like a tree planted by a stream. Amen? Are you with me? Are you with me? When I read that scripture a few days ago, an image came into my mind, is when we were little children up in Manuili in the streams. We were probably about eight years old, seven, eight, it's unbelievable. Our parents would let us roam the mountains when we were little kids. Where there's wild animals. Right, Auntie Bobby? Down in the banana patch. All day long, come out muddy and whatever. We'd walk down into this banana patch and there was a stream going through the property. And we were so innocent. We'd get to that stream, we just this road. This road. Innocent, little children, skinny dipping in the water. Can I say that? I'm okay to say that. I mean, literally, skinny dipping in the water, jump in, play, laugh. And we had this huge rock we would lie on and let the sun just warm us up and the rock on us and we would just be up there. We were the original, naked and not afraid. We were the original, you know the show. <laughs> okay, some of you are looking at what? <laughs> there is a show that's called Naked and Afraid, okay? And they drop them off in the mountains and so forth. But anyway, back to the story of the theater. I'm back. The image that I got, I know you guys are getting images. We're little kids. This stream would come by and it was a beautiful garden. And then God showed me the pictures and the images. Down the stream, it was lined with trees. And you could see the roots of all the trees into all in the stream, going all the way up and all the way down. Whatever type of tree. Mountain apples, mangoes. And it's, it's just this constant resource. It's a constant feeding. And that's what that is. Having, making God first, you're going to be like that tree. Roots right down into that stream. Constantly refreshing you. Constantly giving you the nourishment you need. That nothing, even the sun, can wither the leaves. No, no tragedy in life can get you to you because you're in the stream. Amen? In the stream. Alright? That is a benefit that you have when you make God first. The next thing is wisdom. Say wisdom. Yeah. All right? He gives us divine wisdom to help us to make critical decisions. How many of you need to make some critical decisions in life? Absolutely. All the time. All the time. And to be honest with you, most of the times, I don't know what to do. A lot of times people come up to me, Pastor, what about this? And I just say, 
I don't know. Sometimes I just don't know what to do. I don't know everything. You can't know everything. But the Bible says this, for the Lord gives wisdom from his where? His mouth come knowledge and what? Understanding. From the mouth of God, from his spirit, he gives wisdom. Amen? It's a direct link to the brain matter in you. Alright? It's a direct link. There's a connection that God can give you the wisdom that you need. Amen? Do you know before I go to bed, there's two things I say before I go to bed. And my wife can probably hear me moaning it sometimes. <laughs> this is what I say. I say before I go to bed, oh God help me, I need you. When I wake up in the morning, I say, oh God help me, I need you. <laughs> two things. Every day. And now it's not only just habit, it's how I feel. It's not become a habit, oh, I have to say this, or I have to pray this. No, because it's how I feel. It's the connection, it's the direct connection to God, the relationship to God, because He is first. And I just say, oh God, help me, I need you. And maybe you're there. You just need to say, God, help me, I need your help. I need wisdom. I don't know what to do. When we were told we had to move, and here's the date we got to move out. All I said was, God help me. I don't know what to do. But he will give you the wisdom that you need. When to move and when not to move. Do you know that we turned down two rentals in less than two months before God showed us what we needed to really do is to purchase the home. We had two rentals ready to go, signed, we literally drove up to the house and talked to the neighbors, went home, and God said, no. What is that? Wisdom. It's a connection. Amen? We had another home that they were willing to do these things for us, and it wasn't right. What do you need? What wisdom do you need? You need the connection. You just need to say, God, I need your help. I need your help. Amen? Read the scripture with me. James 1.5. Ready? One, two, three, go. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach. And it will be what? If it him. Ask God. I need your wisdom. Oh God help me. I need you. The next benefit is peace. Did you hear me say peace? Woo! How many of you need peace? I mean real peace. I'm talking about peace that beyond understanding, that's right. How many of you worry? Are you a worry mort? Are you always worrying about things? Yes? Let's read this scripture together. Let's read just verse 6. Ready? One, two, three, go. Don't worry about what? Okay, I'm going to do it one more time. Read that part again. I want that to get into your heart. Ready? One, two, three, go. Don't worry about anything. Don't worry. Right. Instead, what? Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray. Ask God. Um, Ask Him. Um, Help Him. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. It's a peace that you cannot even understand. It's that time where you just go, man, you know what? I don't know where we're going to go, but I have this peace. I don't know how we're going to do this, but I have peace. Why? Because we pray and we give it to the Lord. We trust in Him, as we talked about last week. Having faith and trust, right? And His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ. So there's a guard put on there. All right, the enemy can come in and go, yeah, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna do this. This is gonna happen. No, guard your heart, 
and guard your mind. Amen. Amen? That's a beautiful thing. Again, make God first. Number one. And so we're going to help you with the next place of order is this. Two, family should be second. Say that to your neighbor. Family should be second. Say that to someone else again. Family should be second. You got God first, and then you got your family. Thank you, honey. See, my family. If you look here on the, in your notes, it has a husband and a wife. Ephesians 5, 21 to 33. It talks about husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Right? As Christ is the head of the church, so is like the husband. It says, wives, submit to your husbands as unto the Lord. So there is an order in marriage. Ephesians 6 talks about children. Children, obey your parents. Honor your parents. It says so that things will go well for you and that you will live along. <laughs> obey your parents. If you look at this triangle, this is the divine triangle. As you can see, the husband and the wife, if they're farther from God, what happens the farther from each other? Amen? But if you look at the other triangle, if they're closer to God, they're what? Closer together. Amen? So husbands and wives, the farther you are away from God, the farther you're going to be from your spouse. The closer to God, the closer you're going to be to be together. Amen? The enemy tried to steal and destroy this triangle. Right? You got the other kind of love triangle. That's in error. This is the godly kind of triangle. Amen? Alright? Look at the covering. A covering of Christ. Under the covering of the husband and the wife. These are the basic things in life. In a relationship, in marriage. Christ covers everything, but then the husband covers the wife and the children, and so forth. It doesn't change for single parents. I was brought up with, my mom was like a single parent, although I had a father, but you know, she had to raise us. It's, it's, they're so different. You can take the husband out of there, but you're still covered under Christ, amen? I want to encourage all your single parents, all right? I want to encourage you, stay under Christ. Because your covering is still there. Amen? Christ is your husband. Right? So that's the order. God first, each other second. Family. Number three is we need to allocate some time to be balanced. Look at your neighbor and say, we got to make time. Look at somebody you really love and say, we need to make some time. Right? Time management is important because life is short. Life is short. The earthly journey is way shorter than we think. Amen? David points this out. He says in Psalm 39, 4, 5, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me, God. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. Your life could go today. You could walk out of this door and it's done. Amen? It says here, you have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. At best, each of us is but a breath. It's just but a breath. Your life. Your children's life, your spouse's life, is short. Our life barely registers on the scale of eternity. Amen? 
The Bible is telling us that we're going to spend more time in eternity than here on this lifetime. Isn't that beautiful? All right? Therefore, it's, it's essential to make use of every moment that you have. Moses prays, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Making God first gives you wisdom, and here is God's wisdom. Here's an all-encompassing application. Here we go. Number one, write this down. Learn to live each day with an eternal perspective. Have an eternal perspective. All right? The Bible says he has planted eternity in a human heart. Your heart desires to live forever. It doesn't matter if someone comes up to me and tells me, well, I'm an atheist and I don't believe in God. You know what? Whatever. But somewhere in you, you want to live forever. Somewhere in you, you want to cry out, God help me. Okay? We can use all of our intellect and all the things that we can think of, but God has put eternity in the heart of man. Amen? Hey, life is short, people. We can't let life consume us and steal the time that we have. We have to be careful. The beautiful Rochelle was helping my wife pack this weekend. Yay! She's a great purger. If you need help purging, you can hire her. She's really cheap. Just give her pizza. And she can purge. <laughs> but I was realizing how time flies. Not long ago, that, that young lady was a little tiny girl walking in our church. And she had these little glasses, and she was little, little, um, what kind of dress was that? I don't like a Hawaiian, moo, 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 and she walked in, and now she's like this under dancer, and praising God, and doing all this stuff. But I realized how time flies. Think about your children now, they may be little, but how time flies. Amen? Uh, we can't waste the time. we got to put things in priority. Don't let the world steal what God has given you. We can't. We can't. It says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, and making the most of every opportunity. Has life been out of sort lately? Have you been confused? Have you been like, oh man, well, maybe you need to declutter Maybe you need to purge. Maybe you need to get rid of some things. I'm going to call up Kili before we get in prayer. And if that's you this morning, Jesus spoke these words to a guy named Thomas. And he said these words. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm going to stop right there. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The problems that you have, he's saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in the context of the scripture, he was talking about eternity with Thomas. Thomas was saying, where are you going to go? I don't know how to get there. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let God, Jesus Christ, be the way, the truth, and the life. You need help in your relationships, your home. He's the way, the truth, and life. You need wisdom, he's the way, the truth, and life. You need strength, he's the way, the truth, and life. You need peace, he's the way, the truth, and life. Amen? Let's pray. Let us pray.